guys welcome back to the channel today I'm going to show you how to operate the Singer M1000 mending machine this is a really cute little machine so first let's just look at what all goes into it I'm going to do an overview and then I'll get into how to do the bobbin how to thread the machine and take your first stitches and I'll leave timestamps in the description down below so if you're not wanting to go through all that you can just skip to what you want um, you get an electric cord and a presser foot naturally and the plug-ins are over here on the side so your electric cord plugs in down here at the bottom and then you'll plug this into the socket your presser foot is going to plug into this hole right here so there's electricity and then there's your presser foot or your um, foot pedal okay so let's see what else comes with the machine it's really not a lot because this is just a mending machine and so we'll see you get a package of extra needles there's three in here you get four extra bobbins there's three in the package and then there's one already in the bobbin compartment you get a little wire needle threader and you get a screwdriver okay don't lose this you'll need this and that's all there is um you get the manual which is in several different languages so this is a really cute little machine um like i said it just doesn't have a lot of features but what it does you know it does pretty well the first thing that i see is it has a finger guard down here here's the finger guard and i'm going to remove that so i can so you can see better you might want to leave it on but i'm going to take it off to take it off you're just going to take your screwdriver and there's a little screw right there we're just going to loosen that up just a little and you can see it came loose and that's going to slip backwards and then off okay so and then you'll need to tighten that screw back up so it'll hold your foot on okay i'm going to tighten this up and then i'll come around the other side so you can see better okay i'm around here to the other side and we ju i just took off the needle guard that you have you just undo the screw and slide it back a little bit and it'll come off but i want to show you when you undo that screw your foot has a u-shaped thing here so when you put that screw back on be sure that you raise the foot back up the foot and you can put the arm in the down position this arm this lever right here is what raises that up and down so put it in the down position and then tighten that screw back up okay we are back and in ready to sew mode now when you plug your machine in you see the light comes on so the machine is on it's either on or it's off so when you have it plugged in please make sure that your foot pedal is either unplugged or up on the counter i have mine up here beside me um, you don't want to take a chance on accidentally stepping on it so be sure that you know when you're ready to sew you're ready to sew the machine does not have a sensor under here so if you step on that foot pedal when you have your finger under this needle it will sew through your finger and it's not you know life-threatening most of the time but it is extremely uncomfortable so just just please be careful with that foot pedal all right the first thing we're going to need to do is wind a bobbin now it comes with a bobbin in here so we're going to take that one out just pull the cover towards you and then lift this bobbin out now we're ready to wind a bobbin so take an empty bobbin and you're going to need a spool of thread now this thread is a cross wound thread that means it makes like a, zig, a kind of a cross pattern and i have a video about the difference between cross wound and stacked thread and whether you need you know when you need what 
Well, basically it amounts to whether your spool pin is vertical or horizontal. This one is interesting because it's really neither one. So I'm assuming it would prefer a stacked thread, but I don't happen to have one right now. And um, I've used both interchangeably, so don't get upset about it. All right, now you want your thread to be coming off the front of the spool like this when you put it on your spool pin. The diagram you're going to follow for the bobbin is the red one, and it shows us we're going to use this little round spool. We want to come around to the front of it. Now put your finger on your thread to give it some tension because you actually want it to go under that. You want to snug it up under there and then come around to this side so that it makes a cross and you see it looks just like our diagram. Now we are ready to go over here to the bobbin holder. Okay, in this spool right there, right there, there's a little hole. So we're going to put the thread through the hole. Now when you thread it, you're going to go, let me see if I can get it so you can see it. All right, you're going to go under the hole. from this side and then it comes out the top, okay? So you went, you see how it's in there? Okay. And then pull your slack out. Then you're going to snap it down on your holder and then pull your holder that way. Now that engages the bobbin. Okay, when you get ready to wind a bobbin, I always hold my thread up high and with a little bit of pressure on it for the first few laps or so and let it get anchored on there. So let's give it some gas. Now you can clip it off at this point. That's fine. And then we're going to wind some more. Now pay attention because when you're winding your bobbin, the needle is going up and down, so please don't stick your finger under there. And you're just going to keep winding. Now I watch my bobbin, and if it gets a little bit heavy on either the top or the bottom, I just use my finger and kind of guide it up and down so that you get a nice level bobbin. Now, you do not have to fill the bobbin all the way up. You can stop wherever you, you know, if you're just doing a, a few stitches or something, don't, don't fill it all the way up, maybe halfway, whatever. So, I'm going to go ahead and fill this one the rest of the way so you can see what it does when it gets completely full. Now, when it gets full like this, see that it will still be running, but the bobbin is not spinning. So, that just means it's full. You can take it off. So, we're going to slide this back to the left. Pull this off of here and clip it off. And that is a nicely wound bobbin. Now let's see if we can put it in the bobbin compartment. We are ready now to load the bobbin. Take your bobbin and you want your thread to be coming over the top side of it like this. And you're just going to drop it right in and pull it slightly to the right. Now the next trick is to get it into, there's a little slot right here, okay, a little slot. And what you need to do is get your thread into that slot. Just tuck it down in there and then pull to the left and you will see your bobbin moving. Okay, now I tucked it into this little slot right there, and now it's kind of sandwiched in between this metal bar and this really thin piece of metal right here. Okay, and you're going to pull it off and then just let it hang off towards the back. And then you can put your 
put your cover on just with your thread tucked right in there. Okay. All right, now let's see about getting the top fixed up. Now we're ready for the top. Go ahead and pull it out of the thread guide that you were using to wind the bobbin. And we're still coming off the front of the spool. So when you pull it, it's going that direction. So all you have to do is this metal guide right here, you're just going to come right underneath the front bar. So take your thread and just lay it on top of there so that it goes right underneath there. Okay. At this point, you need to check and be sure that your presser foot is in the raised position. Mine is down. There is a lever on the back of your machine. When you flick it this way, your presser foot goes up. So stop now and be sure that that is up. Okay, there are tension discs in here that squeeze and put tension on the thread as you sew. And if you have the foot down, the tension discs are engaged, they're squeezed shut. So when you lay it down in this path, it may or may not get in, in between them. So if you raise the foot up, it definitely will. So now we're going to lay it right down through the tension discs and come up. Okay. For this next one, we need the take-up lever, which is a metal lever right in here to be sticking up through here. If it's not, come over here to your hand wheel. Turn the hand wheel towards you. Never turn it away from you. Turn it towards you. I mean, don't, don't get upset if you accidentally turn it a little bit away from you. It's just the machine is designed for this to move in this direction. So if you do a lot of that, you could wear something out or tear something up. All right, this take-up lever has a little hole right in the tip right here. So we are going to get this thread and we are going to put it right through that hole just like that so that it comes out the other side okay and let's pull some down all right now we are headed to the needle and you see your guides are numbered that was three so now we're going down here to four okay our next step is this metal bar right here and this is going to be the last step before the needle you can go ahead and let your presser foot down at this point and let me zoom in a little bit closer there's a thin ish piece of metal right here you need to go in between like this rectangular see this rectangle pick block of metal right here and then there's a thin guide right here we need to go in between those two so what I do is I hold the thread horizontally like this and then with my right hand slip to the back and then come down. Now it's seated in this guide. Our next step is going to be to thread the needle. There's a little hole in the, tie, in the end of the needle and you're just going to thread it from front to back. So if your thread is frayed on the end, and this one may be by now, just snip a little off. And now let's see if we can manage to get it right through that needle. There we go. Okay. And then grab your thread. Just pull it right on through. Make sure it doesn't get wrapped around your needle with that loop. Okay. Now the machine is threaded. The next thing we need to do is what we call pulling up the bobbin thread. Remember we left the bobbin just kind of hanging out here, sticking out. So hold on to the thread that is coming out of the needle. Pull it off to your left a little bit and just hold it sort of tight. You don't have to be pulling on it. You're just holding it. You're keeping tension on it. 
Now, come over to your hand wheel and turn it towards you slowly and watch the needle go down and wait for it to come back up. Now, when it comes up, keep turning, there will be a loop. It's going to pull up a loop. That loop comes from your bobbin. So, pull the loop until the end comes out. Now, you have both threads coming out together. Okay? You have the bobbin thread coming out of this little hole that's right underneath your needle. So, if your thread is properly threaded now, you have one strand coming through the needle and going through the hole in the foot coming out underneath it and then you have your bobbin thread coming out of this little art ovaly thing under here. Okay. And now we are ready to take a few stitches. Let's have a look at the stitch selector guide first. Um, this stitch right here, they call it stitch number one, that is just a straight stitch but with the needle in the left hand position. So your needle is going to be further that way. It's not going to be in the center. Now, the next few stitches are all straight stitch and they are all center needle. The difference is, and you don't, you can turn it, it like stops even in between. These make your stitches get smaller and smaller. So this is going to be like a really long basting stitch whereas this would be a really tight, tiny stitch. Okay. And then the next, next stitch over, this is still a straight stitch, but it's in the, with the needle in the right hand position. And as you sew, you will see there are different times you'll want those applications. Now, this first stitch here, this is a stretch zigzag. It's like if you're trying to do a, a zigzag on stretchy fabric, it's going to take several stitches going up and several stitches going back down. You can look at the diagram and it, it pretty much tells you. But that way if you're sewing on some knit, like putting a hem and a t-shirt or whatever, it won't be breaking your stitches. Now, this stitch is your blind hem stitch, which is really handy. I have a whole video on how to do a blind hem stitch, so I will link to that because it, it's going to be the same no matter what machine and this will be your setting. Now, this is just a regular zigzag, but it's going to be a wider one, and you can decrease, that's a medium length, and that's going to be a tiny zigzag. And now we're right back where we started. So let's go to this first center needle position. I have my tension set on four, that's where it came, and if you notice, the four, the five, and the six, they have a block around them. That means that's pretty much going to be your preferred settings. Now, there may be a time when you have to change it, but for the most part, you're going to want to start out at four, five, or six and just see what you're getting there. So now we're ready to sew a seam. We're going to choose a stitch. I'll just pick one of the straight stitches there, kind of in the middle, and you're going to put your fabric under your presser foot, uh, drop the lever to let your foot down. Now, hold your thread tails out to the left. You're not pulling on them. Just hold them uh, firmly so that they don't get sucked back into the machine. A lot of machines, that first stitch or two, they want to pull those tails back in. So just hold them out to the side. Now before you uh, press the foot pedal, take your hand wheel and roll it towards you and put the needle into the fabric. And then give it a little gap. And that's how you're going to do your first stitches. Now right here is your reverse lever. Usually when you sew a seam, you want to lock your stitches at the beginning and at the end. So if this were the end of my seam here, I would hold this button down and press the lever. And see it's going to go backwards. So that is your reverse. There is also a thread cutter over here on the side. So when you get through sewing, lift your needle up 
then lift your foot up and pull it out. Now when you pull, try to pull your fabric out, if it will not come, if it is just incredibly tight, roll your wheel a little bit more. You may not be in the uppermost position. So pull your thread out, wrap it around this thread cutter just like this, and it will cut your threads off, okay? Um, now, the last thing, what about when you need to change a needle? All you're gonna do, first of all, take a sticky note or some other piece of paper and stick it under here. Now you're gonna wanna pull the thread out first. Anytime you remove your thread from your machine, snip your thread up here at the top and pull it out frontwards. Those little guides, they're designed for the thread to come out front ways. And if you continually pull them out the back way, it just wears them out faster. So let your foot down. The reason you put the paper here is when it releases the needle, sometimes the needle can drop down in that hole and that's really a pain to try to get it out from there. So just save yourself some time um, and put that paper there. Many, many times I wish I had thought of that before, but anyway. Okay, there's a little thumb screw right here and it does have an indention on it so you can either use your screwdriver to loosen it, just turn it. Now remember, you put that foot pedal unplugged or out of the way while you're doing this because if the light is on, the machine is on and it will sew. So turn this towards you and it only takes a couple of turns. It's gonna loosen up and you can slip that needle right out. And then you'll take your new needle. Now these needles have a flat back on them, the back of it is flat. So when you get ready to put your new needle in, you hold that flat part towards the back. That's the only way it's gonna go in. That's why they do that. And make sure it gets all the way up. And then you just tighten your screw right back down again, okay? And that is pretty much all there is to know about the Singer M1000. If it helped you out, please hit the subscribe button or the like button and come back to Moms. We'll get up to something else later. Thanks. Bye.